All right, traders, good afternoon. This is Christian from Hertz Tribeca Trade Group, and it is Monday, August 31st. So what have we got for the day? Uh, we had the S&P uh, ended the streak. I think we were up, what, five or six days in a row. We've also been up, I think, five weeks in a row in terms of positive performance. So uh, that breaks the streak for today. Just down 22 basis points. That's it. Uh, the Qs outperformed, big outperformance for the Qs again, up 80 basis points. Small caps underperformed again, so they were down, they were down 1.1%. Uh, we'll put some green over here for for the Qs. Um, also, silver had a nice day too, that was up 2.4%. Uh, big move in the VIX again. So we saw this kind of trail off a bit on Friday, especially going into the close. But uh, the VIX was was back at it. So what does that mean? Well, we're, we'll we'll get to this question in a second. Let me just recap today's performance. It looks like biotech was your best performer. Nice to see some biotech different some different areas of the market kind of get going a little bit today. And and again, nice to see. Uh, biotech. There was a couple names in here that kind of drove the performance, I think. But um, but overall, I did see some strength in some other names too. So if we look at the movers, this AIMT was was the name that drove the performance. Remember, this is an equally weighted ETF, so every name gets the same percentage uh, representation until the next rebalance. So this A. AIM to all the prices will fluctuate. That's the variable, and they get struck uh, on every quarterly expiration, and we'll see that again in September. Uh, but the prices float until then. But they're all basically around equal weight, give or take the performance. And and AMIT was the one that performed uh, best today. But again, you got a lot of names that were up over three percent. So it wasn't just that name. Um, there was also some good outperformance within that group. So that that was the shining star for the day. Of course, Tesla and Apple, unrelentless call buying in those names. Energy got smoked again. One of the things that I talked about really quick was um, in the morning session was hurricanes usually get, especially when there's a hurricane in the Gulf, there is usually some, you know, oil, gas prices go up a little bit. They didn't really budge last week. It kind of tells you how bad that group is, right? Can't even get going on a hurricane in the Gulf. Usually that would be like a 10% spike or something like that. Um, we didn't get any of that last week. Uh, the banks, home builders, they did not perform well uh, again today. Materials uh, down 1%. You know, the, the builders, I think, are getting interesting at this point, right? You know, perhaps they got a little bit ahead of themselves. I'm looking at, um, I started a position today in DHI. It didn't do much for my entry price, but uh, DR Horton is one name that I'm looking at. Uh, you know, to possibly leg into a position. Like I said, I did start a position today too. The other one that I like in the space is Lennar. So these are kind of setting up, uh, I think, you know, multiple red bars, uh, DHI and Lennar, and there's a couple other ones there. So let's talk about the, the two names that were in focus today. Um, Apple ended up, how did this end up? 3.3%, it looks like it came in a little bit. I mean, the, the, the amount of call buying in this stuff was unrelentless, uh, you know, uh, right, or should I say relentless, I guess. Um, just unbelievable uh, the way that they were buying calls in this stuff today. Just throughout the session, you know, if you go into our tr our trades channel, um, not, tr not just trades, but uh, option activity, right? You could see how many times I mentioned this Apple today. Um, yeah, Apple, I think it's just in the main chat. Apple, 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 Apple over and over again today. Tesla, same thing. You can see how many times we talked about, we mentioned Tesla today too. Here's, here was more Apple, by the way. Apple, Tesla, Apple, <laughs> just continuous. And any little dip, um, you know, Tesla here again. So just crazy, crazy stuff. Uh, so you had to kind of pick and choose which which one you were going to do for the day. Look at this thing. It's up to 516 after hours. So I'm still long some Tesla. I got long, um, you know, the best way, and I'll kind of talk a little bit about this, you know, playing high momentum names. The calls are just too expensive outright. I don't know how anybody plays the stuff with calls outright. It's so expensive that I attribute, like, if you're buying weeklies, it's gambling. Because, it, you know, if something happens two minutes later, 
you don't really have any recourse, right? You could buy like a Tesla call for like 15 bucks and a half a minute later, it's, it's down to 12 bucks, right? I mean, that's not really trading in my opinion, um, but people do it and people have made a lot of money in Tesla. It's just basically, you know, holding, but they are just so expensive. I, I can't do that. I can't, I mean, even when I, like when I'm trading, when I'm kicking around weekly calls, I'll usually go to next week rather than this week, because again, you can have some, you know, a little bit, uh, if it doesn't move the right way, you know, it can help, it can, um, you could kind of add to it and kind of recover the position a little bit. But what I do is call spreads for this kind of stuff. I do this for Amazon as well. And um, yeah, so obviously, so added a Tesla weekly call spread, um, 470.45. I put that on for 540 and I took that off for $9.00. Right, so that was almost a double. And then what do I do, right? If you watch some of my videos last week, um, I roll the profits, right, and put it into a new trade, right? So I'm now in the 490, 500 call spread for 370. I took one one uh, week target here just because I wanted to do that today. Um, I think I took one uh, one target at 420 just to get something in, and now I've got the rest of the balance on. So you know. Maybe I can get a little bit more than that, considering this thing is up to 515 after hours. So unbelievable. So that was the one that I played. Um, also, you know, AMD was another one that went, you know, bonkers today too. So, you know, there's a lot of momentum right now in certain names. If there's a story and there's something going on, I mean, this AMD was a hell of a move today. So very, very impressive. Those were the three names that we saw the most call buying but definitely the Tesla and Apple, just uh, like I said, not unrelentless, but relentless. Uh, pretty amazing stuff. Zoom after hours is up to, uh, where, where are these guys after hours? 350 I saw, 356, unbelievable earnings that these guys put in. So um, a couple things about like today's, you know, and of course you could see uh, the rest of my trades in here. Um, you know, I'm taking profits in, in some things, right? I'm kind of trying to take some things off the books. Um, shop and Fever or a couple other trades that I'm looking at. Um, you know, I put on a shop weekly call spread as well. Um, that trade is just around, you know, basically triggering. Uh, you know, and that's basically I'm looking for a move through, through value. And that's it. Just a $10 wide call spread that I played. In, or sorry, $15 wide call spread in Shopify. So um, let's look at the technicals in the S&P just for a second. Um, notice that we kind of close right around that top of value. That's going to be an important level to watch for tomorrow for the S&P. 3,496. Now, um, you know, there's just we're down a quarter of a percent for the day. That's not a major situation at all. Remember how my trading system works, price and trend are number one, you know, in terms of what I watch, right? Forgetting about opinions, forgetting about predictions. You know, I do use some intuition and I look at the internals underneath the hood, right? We look at market breadth and things like that, but ultimately price and trend are the number one indicators. However, if there's a, there's a few things kind of providing, you know, under the, under the hood, or, um, you know, in terms of indicators, like the VIX, which is up again today, you know, it should kind of tell you something. We know that the market is heated, right? With the RSI that we talked about on Friday, we'll switch this over to the daily chart. Let's see if this kind of came in a little bit. Um, not really, it's still a 76 RSI. That is very overbought for the indices. Um, it was worse, it was an 80 coming into today. Um, the, the Q's RSI is going to be 77, right? These are very, <laughs> the, these are very overbought indicators. So couple that with what the VIX is doing. If the VIX is going up while, remember, the VIX is just for the S&P. Uh, it's not for the Q's. It's not for IWM. It's just for what S&P options are pricing in. This kind of tells you some, something odd is going on right now to see the VIX up 15%. 1.5 when the S&P is flat. So you could either try to make some argument that says, oh, this is why the VIX is up. This is why, oh, it's because of this. That's all. Or you could take what it's telling you and say, 
hey, maybe maybe I make some adjustments in my portfolio. Um, I kind of take the latter of, of the two. And, and after a huge run, I don't think there's anything wrong with taking a little bit off the table, right? And we talked about that in uh, this weekend's uh, member video, the member macro video. We talked about some strategies. And if you remember, you can go back and review that. But there's definitely some things that you can do. You know, realize how much short-term exposure you have on, for example. Uh, if you want to trade options, maybe trade call spreads or put spreads versus uh you know versus going outright calls right Th this way you're you're risking a little bit less money right and there's a couple other things that you can do too but um you know for me i i try to adjust with new information rather than argue with the new information and try to sell my case about why i think it's this or why it's that so that's it um you know i think this month was tremendous and it's a question of how greedy you're going to be, right, in the face of a couple warning signals I, that I see, right? The market's overbought. The VIX going up pretty decently the last couple of days, um, not Friday, but, you know. So if, if it's just a warning signal and it doesn't materialize to anything, so what does that mean for you? probably nothing you know maybe maybe you don't have all the trades on that you want to and you know my thought is like I don't as I've mentioned in previous videos I don't go all 100% into cash I just make some adjustments right I kind of get a little bit more conservative I watch my risk taking I watch my short-term exposure and so on and so forth right and if I get stung a little bit because there's a down two percent day I, I'm fully prepared for that right and and that's why you make those adjustments all right because we can't predict remember we can't predict what this market's going to do right some people last night if you looked at futures you know futures were up over half a percent last night they were, they were doing you know backflips oh great this is wonderful it's so easy well look at what happened today i mean again this is not drastic but we finished red so uh, you know did you know did you know that was going to happen no, most people didn't know that that was going to happen. And it's really impossible to predict what's going to happen day to day. Um, but we, we, so what can we do, right? It means we can control what we can control, which is our risk. The sooner you learn that as a trader, you know, the better that you're going to be, you know, in terms of managing risk, managing money and trading, right? And there's our risk disclaimer, by the way, everything that we're going through today is for information purposes only, not giving out any advice or recommendations. Um, and then lastly, it's the end of the month. I'll release my P&L for the month. Um, I'm up very nicely. Uh, this has been tremendous, you know, the last couple months and especially this August. I wasn't expecting this type of month, but like I said, we followed price and trend and, uh, and kind of go from there and look for individual setup. So I'll put that on my Twitter feed. I'll put that in the trading room uh, once that comes out uh, tomorrow on, uh, on E-Trade. It takes them a day to adjust, but uh, overall, awesome. You know, so, all right, guys, thanks for a great, thanks for um, watching the video. Have a great night and I'll see you tomorrow.